Good morning. I hope you had a really good rest and just want to talk to you briefly. It's going to be a short message this morning because I know it's something that we need to talk about. I believe that so many people have gotten into social circles or relationships and really they have excluded their time, their prayer time, their study time and even just time with family. Actually, uh, like I said in my actual uh, description of this particular uh, session, I, I described how the enemy would use this particular type of behavior for, for a lot of us to get involved in relationships because we feel emotionally connected to them, you know, or the relationship, you know, you don't want to be out of the circle of the social realm, you don't want them to think that you're so holier than thou, or, you, you know, or your relationship even with others that in your family or what have you, because you just want to make sure you feel included, not excluded. But, you know, in some fashions, we have done just what God does not want us to do, and that is to create little idols to create people to try to pacify what only he can do you know we get these emotional attachments we become obsessed we really find ourselves soon you know committing idolatry we've got to repent we've got to renounce these people who we hero worship is what i call them and realize that our sovereign creator and his name is jesus it's going to be the only somebody that's going to make us feel included in the brethren and in the spirit of a son or daughter in the spirit of God. And so in the Bible tells us, in exactly, you remember in uh, Exodus chapter 20, it says, Thou shalt not, verse 4, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. This is the iniquity that's very clear. That means from generation to generation. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now, put it into a practical way. Just think about a husband and a wife, you know, being together and he look around, she's looking at somebody else, you know, he's getting jealous. And so, same thing. Jesus in the spirit realm, when we drew away from him because we wanted to make sure we stay in the circle or we wanted to make sure we stay connected and a whole bunch of things are going on with people right now emotionally because of the way things are in the church. Maybe because somebody got a promotion or they got an ordination or they got more attention from the pastor than the other one. Or maybe, you know, your husband's paying more attention to the children than you or whatever that situation is in the relationship. I want you to know that he's a jealous God. And these issues that we're dealing with as it relates to obsession and control and manipulation and looking at these strongholds in our minds that cause the addictive thinking to believe that this is what we need to feel whole within ourselves, it has to be broken. We must renounce that spirit and tell the Lord that we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice unto him and every worshiping idol that we have lifted up before him, we repent, we're sorry, and we bring it back to him and say, be Lord over again over us again now the reason for this is because God has given us all gifts we all have a measure of grace we all have a gift of grace and anointing on our lives so he wants to use that you should not let that gift go to the grave that's why you say oh what is Dr. Murphy talking about now that's because he's anointing me with many gifts and I'm not gonna take him to the grave I'm gonna make sure that I kill me some devils to set the captives free and go ye there for and make disciples and that is what these messages are about to help us come back to the place where we need to be and that is in the presence of the Lord now do we need mentors do we need pastors most definitely that's part of fivefold gifts as well but we got to recognize that we won't get so consumed with everybody that we forget our family we forget our marriage we forget you know that God begins with our family first at home and of course he is our sovereignty he is the one that made us and created us so we need to get with him and we need to make those things go in that order these areas that we have in our lives that we begin to say that we want to edify those and push them up to the point that we forget about the gifts that he's put inside of us and we forget about the assignments he's put on our lives because we feel too, you know, maybe insecure. We feel that I just don't know without them. I don't know if I can make it or they help me grow. That's all fine and good. But you've got to know that God is counting on you to push that baby out 
and give him glory for what he has done in your life. You got to enjoy your journey of growing and knowing who you are in the spirit. You got to enjoy your journey and knowing that he is your everything. And man will never be able to completely give you everything you need. Because why? He created us. and He already know your weaknesses. He know your strength. And so I want you to say tonight that, Father, whatever I have done to control others or to feel emotionally too attached to others or made gods out of these people, Father, give me their names in my spirit that I can write them down and keep a watch over those, Lord. And then you want to keep tabs on these things in the spirit realm so you won't repeat them, so you won't keep going back, so you won't keep saying, Lord, I repent for that. Lord, I, I feel so connected to them. I seem like I just got to talk to them every day. I just need them. You've got to know this is not the path he wants us on. He wants to be lifted. You heard the message here in Exodus 20. You cannot bow down. You cannot connect yourself to the point that these people have become little man-made gods and you've got obsessed and you've got emotionally, you know, overtaken by these spirits. So you've got to know that he's everything to us. And so I want you to remember that in Jesus' name. Don't you dare try to start saying to yourself, that's all I need and that's all I want. Jesus, all we need and all we want. This song I want you to think about it. Think about the prayer that you pray to God tonight. Think about how important it is as you begin to get into your time with the Lord. Tell him to draw me close, Father. Yes, Lord. Think about it. You need the Lord more than anything. Tell him, Lord, don't let me go. I know I made a mistake. Come on, let's worship him together. I want to do that with you. Tell you to lay it all down. In your own spirit, sing it. Yeah, we want to be his friend, right? Thank you, Father. Tell him that. You're my desire. You are my desire. Tell him. No one else will do. No one else and nothing will do. Tell him. Lord, we praise you today. Nothing else can take your place, Jesus. Tell him. Father, we want to feel the warmth of your embrace. Touch him, Abba. Touch him. Tell him to help you find a way to break free. Lord, we love you. That one that's listening, that one that's found themselves in an emotional attachment, that one that just cannot see the making without somebody in their face, Father. Come on, tell them. Father, you are who we want, you are who we need, King. Tell him. Hey, Lord, you are who we ever need. Come on, tell him. My Jesus, tell him. My God, my God, my God, we're sorry, King, we're sorry, Abba. Tell him. Tell him to help you know. You know, he's there. He's got a moment bad enough. No more than anybody. Tell him to draw close. Father, draw us closer to you. Never, never let us go. I'm praying for you. Yeah, my God, thank you. Never, never let me go. Tell him about that depression. Tell about the things you're worried about. Father, we're laying it all down again. Yes, we are. Let go. My God, I want to hear you say that I'm in your green tell My God, my God. You are my desire. Tell it. No one else. No one else. Nothing will do. My God, my God, I feel that. Nothing else. Father, you come on and worship him. Nothing else. Promise him that nothing and nobody. Feel all the you. My God, I want to feel the warmth of your embrace. Tell him, hey. Tell me, Father, wait up. I'm sorry. Wait, we need you. We need you. We need you. We need you. My God, my God, we're going to give back to you, my Jesus. My God, we're sorry. Oh, what's the door? Hey, my Lord, my God, we repent today. We start again with everything, Lord. Everything we put before the king. We repent right now. You're all we need us. Hey, you're all we need us. You're all we want. I know he's all I need. Hey, I'm going to try to help you. No, I'm going to help you. My Jesus. My Lord and my God and my King, we're sorry, my Jesus. Hey, but everybody, we're for you. Everybody, we're for you. My Lord, and my Lord, and my Lord, we're coming to say, clear the wash and still for the dinner. And my Lord, help us go. 
you and me, 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 Thank you, Jesus. We need you. God bless you. I pray that you have a wonderful morning. That's all you got to remember is he's jealous. God bless you. And remember, it's up to you. God bless you. Talk to you later.